critical race theory. It's what MAGA Republicans running for office like Glenn Youngkin, who wants to be governor of Virginia, think will deliver them victory at the polls. And yeah, Youngkin wants you to think he's not a Trumpist, but on this issue, he definitely is. Just have a listen. But friends, Dr. Martin Luther King called us all to be better than we are. He called us to judge one another based on the content of our character and not the color of our skin. And critical race theory is a political agenda that is absolutely in our schools. And it teaches everyone to view everything through a lens of race and then pits our children against one another. So friends, on day one, we will teach history, but I will ban critical race theory. Ah, yes, noted Martin Luther King Jr. scholar, Glenn Youngkin. Of course, it's all complete BS. Critical race theory isn't taught in Virginia schools or in any K through 12 schools in this country. It is a university level law school course examining the ways in which racism as a structure is embedded in our legal system and our government policies. But for Republicans, it's become shorthand for anything about race or racism, about the teaching of slavery or civil rights that I don't like or makes me uncomfortable. In fact, while the Trumpists continue to get hysterical about CRT at school board meetings, smarter, less Trumpy Republicans are pushing a pretty similar message, but in a much savvier, more moderate sounding way. Let's not obsess over race or racism, they say. Let's not divide people, especially our kids. Just listen to Republican Condoleezza Rice, former National Security Advisor and Secretary of State under George W. Bush, one of the architects of the Iraq War and CIA black sites, speaking on, of all places, The View yesterday. There's been this sort of rollback of history. People want to hide history. Oh, I don't. And, no, come, well, come well yes, yes, no. that, that is true. Oh, no. 45 and what, seconds, and what, and what we are seeing is this, this rollback of history. Parents don't want children to hear about the real history. And when we teach children about the real history, I think that is when we will really have true people are racial being, reconciliation. People are, being told, people are being taught the true history, but I just have to say one more thing. It goes back to how we teach the history. That's what I'm saying. We teach the good and we teach the bad of yes. history. Yes. Yeah, but right. what we don't do is make seven and ten year olds feel that they are somehow bad people because of the color of their skin. We've been through that. Yeah. Yes. And we don't need to do that well, again. We don't want anybody. Anyone. Is any of that true or does Rice have as much credibility on this topic as she had on weapons of mass destruction? Joining me now to discuss all this is MSNBC contributor Brittany Patnick Cunningham. She's a racial justice activist and host of the Undistracted podcast and also a former elementary school teacher. And Michelle Goldberg from The New York Times, also an MSNBC contributor, is back with me as well. Thank you both uh, for joining the show tonight. Brittany, let me start with you. You heard Condoleezza Rice there. Is the teaching of history or of racism making white kids uncomfortable, dividing our children? And you were a teacher yourself once, weren't you? I absolutely was. Here's my real question. We have to wonder what's wrong with a society that does not want to be made uncomfortable by the truth of our history. We also have to wonder why it is so easy to confuse white people with white supremacy. The true teaching of history doesn't teach you to hate white people. It teaches you to hate, abhor, and reject white supremacy. And if we do not teach it properly, the past will be prologue. I'm not surprised at all that this is an opinion coming from a woman who also wants us to forget January the 6th, as if that does not open the door for this thing to happen once again, even wider than it already is. So what's frightening here is that we're seeing not only critical race theory being scapegoated, but we're seeing teachers, educators, principals, scholars, parents, and yes, other students who have been fighting for the correct versions of history to be taught for decades be scapegoated and vilified simply because we want to make sure that the truth is being told. What should actually frighten us is that people are afraid of the truth. People are indeed afraid of the truth, the truth of history. Michelle, what did you make of Rice's argument on The View? You're a, as a journalist, as a liberal, as a parent. Do you think kids can't cope with being taught our history that white kids will feel bad or guilty? You know, I actually think that she might believe that this is actually going on, because I think what you see a lot in conservative media is that 
there will occasionally be these examples of kind of overreach and ridiculous behavior, usually at yes. very elite New York City private schools, you know, things that I think would be ridiculous if they showed up in my Brooklyn public school. And they will be sort of plucked out and taken to be representative of all teaching about race and racism in American schools. I mean, I look, I live in the sort of neighborhood in a very liberal part of Brooklyn, you know, a lot of sort of white people with Black Lives Matter signs in the windows. And I feel like if, if this was happening anywhere, I would be aware of it, right? If you sort of had <laughs> students being browbeaten as opposed to just, I, I said to my husband the other day, I, don't, I actually am not sure my children have ever heard heard the phrase white privilege, except for me. Um, you know, so you could argue that some of this stuff should be being taught more. I've seen, so I've seen how it's taught in my kids' school. You know, they've been given age-appropriate books about police brutality in connection with George, with George Floyd's murder. Um, they're taught to sort of respect, you know, they, they have a lot of immigrants from a lot of different places in their classroom, and they're taught to respect them and use materials yeah. that kind of kids can, rep, can can recognize each other in. But so I think what you see is you have this completely unrealistic and caricatured idea of what's happening in schools that yeah. has fueled this panic about critical race theory. And then you have um, people in many of these schools in Texas that will basically tar any sort of teaching about race and racism yeah. that makes them comfortable as some sort of like, you know, Maoist re-education camp. I have this visual image now, Michelle, of your kids finishing their homework and then pouring over your columns about white privilege <laughs> and white supremacy. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, Brittany, the standard response uh, to the GOP attack on critical race theory is to say it's not taught in schools, which is something I said a moment ago because it's true. But I wonder if that's conceding too much to the GOP framing, to the idea that there's something wrong or sinister about critical race theory in and of itself. Should perhaps liberals lean into this culture war rather than run away with it and say, yeah, we should be teaching our kids about structural racism in America, about how our laws can be embedded in racism. And racism is not just about whether you say the N-word or not. You know, as a former educator, it is always fascinating to me how many people have opinions on education and how it should be working who haven't stepped foot inside of school since they graduated from one. The last time I checked, people like the folks you've named, the Condoleezza Rice, these are not education scholars or researchers. They're not even practitioners of education. These are folks who have figured out how to uh, vilify certain people and use their opinion to make headlines. At the end of the day, what is actually happening, to your point, is that we've endured the miseducation of millions of and generations of American students for a, a very, very long time. I agree with you. We should be clear that there is a difference between the teaching of real history and critical race theory, right? So we shouldn't allow something that is, has been critical to the legal field for a long time to be mischaracterized and scapegoated. And at the same time, we should be encouraging more diverse literature. We should be encouraging and truthful historical takes. We should be encouraging the kind of English, science, history, and math that actually is deeply culturally responsive for all students. Here's why that's important, because it sets up marginalized students who historically have not seen themselves reflected in the educational system. It sets them up for greater success, and it enables white students to be successful, continuously successful in a yes. more diverse world and to be better citizens. This is actually good teaching for all children, children of color and white children. If the point of education in any country is to develop a strong and educated citizenry, then you want your children understanding the mistakes of the past so that they are not doomed to repeat them in the present and the future. And there is no way to do that unless we have our children at age appropriate levels yes. digging into the truth of what this country has done and what our promise can be if we choose to behave and respond differently. The line to be better citizens, I mean, I feel like that should be written above every school gate entrance. I mean, that's so key, especially when we see what's happening in our society right now. Michelle, Republicans have decided to run on this topic. They are obsessed with it. Today in Congress, a Republican lawmaker jumped on a uh, right-wing news story about the Attorney General's son-in-law uh, claiming he runs an education company that promotes critical race theory materials. Have a listen. It also concerns us that your actions may have been motivated by your family's financial stake in this issue. Published reports show that, show that your son-in-law co-founded a company called Panorama Education. We now know that that company publishes and sells critical race theory and so-called anti-racism materials to schools across the country. 
<laughs> Just wonder what Merrick Garland is thinking there <laughs> as he listens to that. This obsession with conspiracies, with teaching a sanitized, rah, rah, rah version of our history in schools, of airbrushing our racist past and present. Michelle, we talked in, a, in the A block about authoritarianism on the right. This is part and parcel of that authoritarianism, is it not? Well, you know, and what is so frustrating about this discussion that we have in this country about kind of quote unquote cancel culture is that we, this is a real crisis of free speech in this country. Here you have government entities, both, you know, Republicans in Congress, but also Republicans who control state houses all over the country, using their power to prohibit entire schools of thought, to prohibit kind of broad yes. concepts, to prohibit certain books. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's like, listen, when you when you listen to that, you know, are you or have you ever been um, related to somebody who might profit from critical race theory, right? There's very clear echoes of this sort of thing. And it's you can see why Republicans are so obsessed with it, why, why they're talking yeah. about this and they're not talking about the Build Back Better Act, because it's right no, at the intersection I'm of all their anxieties about a changing America. And let's see what happens in Virginia next month, because uh, if they lose there, maybe they'll think again. Who knows? Brittany Patton at Cunningham, Michelle Goldberg, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.